Okay, let me get this up. I have no idea how this lighting is going to do. We'll see. The problem is that is probably going to screw us up, but maybe not. You never know. And it says I'm not actually live. Oh, gotta love it. Maybe it is. Yay! Okay, finally. Hi. How's everybody doing on a Sunday morning? Hope you guys are all well. Oof, these are horribly dirty. <laughs> Good morning, good morning, and happy first football Sunday of the whole season, at least the football that counts. <laughs> <sighs> I had such a good time yesterday uh, at garage sales. Hi, Don. Welcome, welcome. Um, that I figured I'd share with you all my awesome finds. <laughs> So, I don't know, it's been a while, I think, since I talked about how I do garage sailing. Not that, you know, there's one way over the other that's this perfect way. But, um, I always um, look at, I have two garage sale apps, actually, that take um, listings from Craigslist and from the local, um, you know, community boards on Facebook and that kind of thing. Hi, Sophia. And they, um, they post that onto the app and then they give you the map so you can find it and stuff. Hi, Hexen, my sweetie. Um, and so what I do is on Friday night before the garage sales, um, I look at the app and I have to say, I try to tell people when they've done a good job, which I did tell this woman, thank you, you did a great job that um, I very rarely go to garage sales that don't put, um, post any pictures. I hate that. In this day and age, snap a couple pictures, even if it's just of like your setup and your garage open and stuff, then I can kind of get a little bit of a feel for, are you selling like all baby clothes and I don't really need that right now? Um, or are you selling stuff that maybe I'd actually be interested in and be able to find stuff? I hate when people don't put pictures up. Hi, Justin. So this woman put pictures up and um, also said 75% off everything on Saturday because she had had it since Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And Saturday is this, you know, 75% off everything they put on there. Um, and it was quite a bit of wait. I mean, it took me 22 minutes to get there, which I know that sounds stupid. Hi, Pat. <laughs> but 22 minutes to go for one garage sale, that's kind of a long time, you know. I thought, uh, do I really want to do this? And I thought, no, I'm going to go. Because it looked like a lot of stuff that I would be interested in. Hi, Ann. And 75% off garage sale prices. If they were good garage sale prices, that's really good. Hi, Carmen. Sorry I missed you, sweetie. Hi, Allie. So I decided to go. So I got my car. I only went to one garage sale this weekend because a lot of them didn't have pictures. And I hate that. To me, I'm like, you know what? If you your lazy ass cannot take two or three damn pictures, hi, lazy dragon, <laughs> then I don't want to go to your sale because you have to at least give me some idea that you have something that I may want. Even if it's just one thing at, you know, one picture that I'm like, oh, what's that? That looks interesting. That will bring me to a garage sale. If you don't have any pictures up, I'm, I don't care what you list. I can't see that. How do I know if there's anything at all? It drives me crazy. So anyway, so I did, I ended up telling this one, by the way, I just had to tell you, you did a great job and thank you for posting pictures because I drove from Fairport to get here just for your sale. And I walked away with a whole shit ton of her stuff. I spent $25, which is a lot for me at a garage sale. But I got tons of stuff. So I will tell you, most of the stuff is going to be kind of put away until Yule. Hi, so I feel the same way about sales without pictures. I know it just drives me crazy. Like really, in, in this day and age, two pictures, two pictures. 
just give me two. <laughs> Same way, unless it's down the street, I'm not going exactly. So this woman had, I think she had like eight or nine pictures up and I thought, oh, if they're really good prices and it's 75% off, all right, it's worth the drive for me. And it totally, totally was. Like I said, I spent $25 and let me tell you, her garage sale prices were like a buck, two bucks, five bucks. So I ended up spending a quarter on a lot of these things that were a dollar and are worth way more. I'm really psyched. <laughs> okay, so let me start. Um, let me start with these. Look at how cute these are. They are candle holders. And I have to say, a lot of this stuff is very vintage Christmas stuff, which means it's awesome for Yule. These were a um, dollar which means I paid a quarter. And you can put tea light candles in there and they're like plastic. You know, the old 70s kind of plastic. I love it, love it. And you can put tea lights in them and they're gonna be perfect for altar use, right? Let me, and the other thing I'll start with so I can get it out of the way because they're awful big, is the, see the, I don't know if you can tell the color very well. They're silver coated branches. They're all plastic, glitter, pine cones on them. Aren't they gorgeous? And they were $3 a piece and there's two of them here. Don't come to my garage sale, I'm tough, right? There's two of them here so, and they were $3 each. So I ended up paying, what is that? <laughs> like less than a buck for both of them. So awesome. And I can totally, I don't know, I'll figure something out because I loved those. My lives aren't showing up when I come on. Ah, I don't like to use plastic for ritual. Yeah, I don't either, Serana, but when you're paying a quarter, it doesn't bother me. It's, you know, this kind of stuff is, this is a decorative thing and I put the candle inside it. So I'm not worried about this um, furthering the energy. I know that what I put inside of here is going to further the energy. So, and back in the 70s, I don't know how old you are, Serrano, but back in the 70s, everything was that. So, and I love vintage stuff. So if I if I am dealing with vintage stuff, eh, sometimes I got to deal with that plasticky kind of stuff. And that's okay. Um, I did, I got a um, box of cards that I just think are the cutest cards. And I can totally use them for Yule because it doesn't say Christmas all over it. Can you do... Can you, oh, can you do more tarot decks? Yes, Sophia, absolutely. Good morning, Kay. Hi, Sherry Bug. Actually, I have a, a uh, remind me at the end. <laughs> I have a, a um, what do I want to say, a comparison video to do that I, of a deck I just got in. Unless it's 2 p.m. on a Sunday and I have to log what's left back to Goodwill, right? Hi, Heather. Whoever else I missed, you bet. Hi. Now mine is scrolling, so I'm hoping it's just because my internet sucks down here. Um, so look at these cards. These are so cute. There's a little bunny and a little deer. And it has these gorgeous glitter things. And again, vintage. Um, there is six cards in here. And I don't know if they're all different or not. Nope, they're all the same, which I'm better with. And it says warm holiday wishes. I don't know if you can tell the glitter stuff. There's like that pretty snow stuff all over it. Oh, there you go. You can kind of tell that. And then inside it says, for special moments to share with those you love. So I can totally use that for Yule because it doesn't say, you know, Christmas and Jesus all over it. <laughs> and they're gorgeous and vintage. And there's six cards and envelopes in there. And they wanted $4 originally. So I paid 75% off of $4, which don't ask me what. I have to say, I, that's my non-math brain. Thank goodness this woman was really like ready to get rid of stuff because I know she didn't screw me, but I would, I beat 75% off of $4. That would take me like 10 minutes to go four, five, I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I know I'm terrible. I just don't try anymore because there's like, you know, calculators on your phone. <laughs> a dollar. Thank you. 
You would think I would know that. Four things, right? Mm hmm So I paid a dollar. Oh, see, now I look so... Never mind. All right. <laughs> now, I will tell you, all of the candles that I got, I think, were a dollar a piece. So I paid a quarter for each of the candles that I got. And they're gorgeous and vintage and incredible. Like I said, mostly for you all. So she had the vintage candle, tree candles are worth a lot of money sometimes. Um, this one has glitter on it and it's a tree, so I paid a quarter. This one is fatter and bigger candle, tree, paid a quarter. <laughs> this one is pink with glitter, paid a quarter. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of trees. This one is like silver and green, paid a quarter. And none of them have been lit before. A couple of the, one of the things I got was lit, but learn percentages quickly, right? This one is white, paid a quarter. And so I figured when I go to do Yule stuff, I can like put together kits or something. There's a red one, paid a quarter. <laughs> Here's a really neat one, you know, with the little holly on it. And I loved the way it looked. And it's a huge, tall pillar candle. Paid a quarter. So how can I go wrong, right? So a quarter each. And then, I know I'm putting stuff back on. Sorry, guys. Um, these are the ones that were lit, but I loved these. So it's... Um, rainbow candles which means it's the kind that you light and it has different layers of wax and it so it drips rainbows and they're totally vintage these are like hold on these are definitely at least 70s if not like older than 70s you can even dress your trees with glitter and other yeah absolutely and see how neat looking they are I love those. Hi, Heidi. So, and she wanted $2, so, you know, I paid 50 cents. Yay. These ones are a dollar. I paid a quarter for two tall paper candles for, you know, Yule time. They have, they're like white and, and red stripes. And... Where's my others? I'm trying to find all my candles first. So this whole bag was a buck fifty. She gave it to me for a quarter. Again, they're really cool. Like you know, they look handmade. They're not, but they look handmade. And there's two of those, and then there's this, this um, ugly brown one, which I love. I'm so goofy. Yeah, I like that they're wonky shaped too. Look at the ugly brown one. It just looks cool. I know, right? How do you find your local sales? Okay, so that was part of what I was saying is I have an app. I have a couple different apps actually on my phone. If you look um, you know, at your Play Store or at your whatever Apple has, your iStore thing. You can tell I'm not an Apple user, right? <laughs> um, for garage sale apps. They will, is that a poop? <laughs> they will, and I'm just a yellow one. Um, they will show the garage sales, and if the people put them up, they they gather um, information from like Craigslist, when people put it on Craigslist, and Facebook, when they do local um, garage sale Facebook groups, they gather all that information, and they put them on, what's the name of the candle that's not as tall as taper, but not a chime. Um, I don't know. I know what you're talking about. They're short ones, but they're fat, right? Um, and they put it all on one app, and then they give you the map for it. So you can put it right into your maps and say, you know, here you go. Um, and I always look for the ones with pictures so I can tell, you know, is this something that I'm really going to want? So I got... Uh, does it have a name? It's like garage sale everywhere or something. I will look it up. Of course, it's on my phone. Um, 
I think it's garage sales everywhere garage sales or garage sales everywhere or something so um, these ones are big huge pillar candles um, a quarter each and then let me finish with the Christmas ones first so then I got these tapers which I think are so cute um, and they were a quarter and I had to show them you see them right a quarter each I ended up for all of the things that I got I ended up paying $25 even which was really really good anyway these look like candy canes to me I love them um, then there's a couple well let me show you the Noel one first still in the package says Noel quarter paid a quarter uh this one is a really pretty gold color ah thank you heather thank you thank you thank you that is the one i bet too let me see i should be able to tell you yes that's the one that's the one i use all the time um, so another plain green tree, and then I got, uh, three little green glitter ones, which again, quarter each, quarter each, quarter each, and some of them are still in the packages. I did, I did really well. Look at this one. This is totally 70s vintage candle, a little gingerbread house by Sophia. Isn't that the cutest? I know it's totally 70s, but I love it. <laughs> Laura, hi, Laura. Welcome back. So I just love the 70s goofy glitter. I can't help it. I love it. <laughs> and then I got three Samhain or Halloween candles, a ghost, a pumpkin, and a bat. And I think, is that all my candles? Hold on. I think that's all the candles. This is um, candle holders, though. Let me open up these to show you, because there's two of these. They're like the ceramic things, and you put the candle on top, and it's a pillar candle, you know, with the little thing on them. So you can make different levels of your candles. House protection spells? Absolutely. So there's two of those. And um, I paid a buck. No, I paid a quarter. Sorry, because she wanted a dollar for them. And again, all this stuff was um, vintage. Her grandmother had passed away a couple of years ago. And she just was selling all of her old candle stuff. Because she's like, I don't really need that stuff. So I'm like, hell yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> of course I will. And I didn't say, you know, I'm a witch. So... But if she had looked at all the stuff I got, when you see, like, all the rest of it, she totally would have been able to figure it out. Because, like, how many <laughs> normal people would buy these many candles, right? I don't know. Some normal people would. Not that witches aren't normal. We're totally kind of normal. Well, as normal as we can be, I guess, right? Okay, so I got a little maraca thing. One and fifty cents. I paid almost nothing for it. I can embarrass myself further and um, try to tell you how much nothing is. <laughs> um, this is really super old. This is, I know it's a little stained, but it is a really, really old tambourine. If you see the little things that they made the jingle things with. Hard to, there you go. They're metal. And it still works fine. And so I always look. I, I know I've said this before. I always look for noisemakers and stuff for ritual. Um, when I go to garage sales and flea markets and stuff. Because especially the vintage ones. They always are like, eh, just get rid of it. Well, I paid a quarter for this. And, it, and you know how old this is? It's like super old. <laughs> And I love it. 
So I will add it to my, you know, my big gourd that is filled with, yep, vintage stuff in there. Um, oh, one more candle, which I told my husband I would give to him because it's really cute. And again, I only paid a quarter for it. But it's like super detailed and it's got the um, nativity scene on it. It's really pretty. And I'm not going to do anything with the nativity scene necessarily. But, you know, I told my husband I'll, I'll give it to him. And that's like got its own box and stuff. Actually, before I say I, I'll give it to him, I should look it up because it could be worth, like, you know, some ridiculous amount of money because it's so vintage. Candle is a candle is a candle. Exactly. So, this is so weird that she just had this. So, this is a whole bag of corn husks that specifically are meant to, specially prepared to make dolls, flowers, wreaths, and arrangements. And it's completely vintage. If you see the back of this, it's crazy. Like, this is so old. But I was like, oh my gosh, corn dollies. It even like shows you how to, yeah, Graham was a witch, definitely. <laughs> It even shows you like how to do it. And I got the whole bag for a quarter. <laughs> Graham was a witch for sure. <laughs> so I a quarter. I paid for the whole bag of vintage husks. <laughs> totally crazy. Um, you want to see the books first? And then I'll go through the little stuff. Even if she didn't know it. Yeah, right? Exactly. So this one. This is a really old nursery rhymes and tales. And I love getting the old, old nursery rhymes because a lot of times they keep like the scary part of the book, the scary part of the story in the story. Nowadays, they kind of take the scary part out, you know, but this was published in 1974 and it's got a ton of um, stories that I have never even heard of. If you open the corn house, you should scan the back of that for demo. Yeah, definitely. Hi, Shamara. So they have all kinds of, yeah, I love the illustrations in the old books. Here's Little Red Riding Hood. How much you want to bet that's a scary version of Little Red Riding Hood there? Because... The, the original version was scary. And it definitely looks like it's pretty scary. So there's all kinds of older stories and stuff in there. Animal crackers. Then there's little poems. I just love little vintage books like this. Tamarine is the 60s. Aha! Thank you, Selkie. So I, I adore these. So I didn't pay anything for this. I think I, I think she gave it to me for a buck. And all the books are really vintage too. My favorite seasons. So of course, and this is all vintage. This is Oh, this is actually from 1995. I thought it was a lot older than that. But it has all four different little seasons. And so when you're raising a pagan kid, it's perfect. <laughs> now, I do admit, and I, I hate to say this. I shouldn't say this very much. <laughs> but I do admit that I look through the books to see if they have a lot of gods, like this god and... God should and say your prayers and stuff because those drive me crazy. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because you know me. I'm not against Christians. But you know what? They have a ton of books and we don't have a whole lot of ours. <laughs> so I do, I do look. Corn is used for blessings. So if you want something, you can write it on the corn husk. That's cool. Fold it and burn it. There you go. Um, a child's Christmas cookbook. Oh, come on. Just because they have 
they have books everywhere. I mean, every other book is, you know, let's pray to the Lord this and pray to the Lord that. Um, this one is Evergreen Press. And this, gosh, this looks super old. You see that? It looks really old. I'm being really careful because it looks so old. It doesn't say a year on there. But it looks really old. I really <laughs> need to get to your house and go shopping with you and look at all of your prized possessions, right? I know, Kay, I know. On the cover it says, it doesn't actually, it says like all kinds of stuff. I don't know if you can read it, but it doesn't say the year. Published in conjunction with the exhibition Once Upon a Christmas at the Denver Art Museum. So I may be able to figure it out through that to see when that was. Um, but how cute. My kids would destroy those books, <laughs> right? When you do become a grandma, you'll have to put them up high. Oh, yes. this will. There are certain books that I'll, you know, they'll be allowed to read on their own. And certain books that will only be read with grandma kind of books. <laughs> this one is Treasures of Christmas Past, Deck the Halls. I just love these old books, guys. I'm such a, a fan of the vintage look. Look at that picture. Come on. Oh. All right, come on. Hang on. There we go. I was taught to respect books. Absolutely. And I was too. But there was always that, um, that one kid, you know, that would write on walls or rip the book because they were fighting about who was holding the book or something. Especially when you have more than one kid. <laughs> so again awesome victorian yeah Ugh, look at those i still yep won't even use highlighter in my books i know it it takes me a long time to do that too um this one is an old-fashioned christmas an illustration and decorating and this one let's see if i can figure it out 1975. So, I'm not a grandma, so I have no first-hand experience, right? Me neither yet. Although I'm a great aunt. Um, oh my gosh, look at... Oh, look at... I don't know if you guys can appreciate these. Oh yeah, there you go. The illustrations on that is gorgeous. Wow. Just gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. And they're all like that. I, all right, I love this book. <laughs> This one is really gorgeous. I'm so glad. I don't think I even opened this book. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. A quarter. Cool. Let's do that. <laughs> oh, they are just gorgeous. Yeah, this one is a definite win for sure. For sure, for sure. This one is Halloween Romantic Art and Customs of Yesteryear. So as soon as I saw Vintage Halloween, look at the back. I was like, oh yeah, I'm in. I haven't opened this one yet either. I have no idea she wanted five for it, so I paid a little bit more. I paid like a buck something. Um, but Vintage Halloween, yeah, hell yeah. 
Um, and yeah, this one is a newer book. It was made in 2000, um, but it has like all the old postcards in it from um, Halloween postcards. So hell yeah. <laughs> Santa Claus is a shaman. Yeah, I have that one. I love that one. That's actually a book. Yeah, is that what you're talking about? Because I love that book. I have that one too. It's right up on my um, Sabbat shelf. So this one is super cute because I just love the old vintage postcards. I have a whole bunch of uh, Christmas ones anyways. Christmas collectibles, tree ornaments, and memorabilia. No idea. <laughs> ah. But yeah, you look at vintage Christmas stuff. Come on. You can't go wrong. The old mercury bulbs. My grandmother had mercury bulbs. I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember mercury bulbs, but there's all kinds of neat pictures and images. The cool light bulbs. You didn't know it was a book? Yeah, there's a book called Santa is a Shaman. And it's, hold on. I'll actually show, Mercury bulbs? You don't know Mercury bulbs? <gasps> mercury bulbs are awesome. They're gorgeous. Of course, they're outlawed now because they actually were made out of mercury. But see, Heather, here is, is it Heather? Yeah, here's, when Santa was a shaman. It's a great book. I love this book. And it really talks about where uh, that idea came from and Santa's earliest ancestor and the cross and the broom. It's a really good book. So I thought that's what you were talking about. <laughs> and then, Two more books and then we're on to other stuff. But I don't know if, if you've seen my Beginner Witch series, one of my favorite things to do is to look up ideals. I have a bunch of the ideals magazines. I don't know if you guys, again, if you're old enough to remember ideals magazine. But um, the ideals magazines are, are, are all in the 70s. And they have like vintage poems and pictures and recipes and they came out uh every season so like there's a thanksgiving ideals and i did not okay i i should have and i need to but i haven't yet um and stories about the um the holidays and that kind of thing i collect ideals magazines so i always always when i see them and i know i don't have that edition i always get the ideals. She only had one, but I definitely got it. And I, again, she wanted $3 for it. So I paid next to nothing for another ideals magazine. I, I can't tell you guys, I, when the holidays come around, there's Easter ones, there's mother's day ones. There's, I know Thanksgiving and Christmas is two separate ideals magazines. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Cause there's like, springtime or something oh that goes with easter there is another one that comes out i think just autumn um but these magazines not only if you weren't interested in all the other stuff which this i have to say i know i i always talk about i'm going to go through and cut up some of these pictures and stuff for my um, book of shadows which everybody's like yeah yeah do that i have such a hard time because i love all the stories in here. They have the cutest stories in here. And poems and recipes and pictures. And it, they have the cutest stuff. And I just can't. I'm like, ah, can I possibly cut this up? I don't know. I don't think I can do it. But... I have, yeah, if I'm duplicate ones, that's true. That's true, Pat. I bet you I have a couple duplicate copy machine. Yeah, that's true. 
I got to get a color copier that's part of it. All right, and the last one is a vintage copy of Twas the Night Before Christmas. I know, did you see those mushrooms? I did too. I thought, oh, mushrooms on Christmas. Uh-huh. You finally got Twinnings Buttermint Tea. Yay! It is good, is it? Oh, it is very good. You can't get it there? It used to be at Tops, and I know I haven't seen it lately either. But so this one is, um, you know, it's an old classic. It's an old favorite. And anytime that I get, um, oh, this was put out by Ideals Publishing Company. And it does have the date, but it's in Roman numerals and good luck. My Roman, Roman numeral knowledge is about as good as my math knowledge. That cookbook is from the 60s. That's awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it, Ellie. So this is MCM LXX. I, I, I. So 50, 60, 73, I think. Um, but again, the vintage pictures from, you know, such a classic tale. Can't pass them up. Love the vintage. Gorgeous. So that's all the books. Now I will show you all the little stuff that I was like, oh yeah, add this. Oh yeah, add this in. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, add this in. And again, all this stuff, I paid $25 for everything I'm showing you. MCM. Shit. XXX. Hold on. <laughs> Where is it? I just had it. Where'd it go? Really? Am I blind? That's definitely a possibility, but oh, here it is. MCM L X X I I I, which I believe is 73 because L is 50, right? And then X X that's times 10 times or plus 10 plus 10. So that would be 70 and I I I three, I think. How sad is it that I'm better at Roman numerals than I am at regular math? <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, buttermint tea, and it's awesome. Buttermint tea is awesome. Okay, so quick box of little stuff, and then we're done. Although I have other videos that if you guys really want to see stuff today, I will put them on. I just feel, I always feel like, eh, they're probably going to be sick of me, even though I know I've been taking a lot of breaks, but. So she had vintage purses laid out, and I probably will not keep these because my mother is like, she collects vintage purses, but I might keep the rainbow one, I don't know. Um, and she had different prices on them, but she said uh, a buck for all of them, which meant 25 cents for vintage purses. Hi, Ayana. So this is the first one, she said 25 bucks, and there's wool like rosettes on there. And it's like an awesome bag. And I always think these, um, the handles, now, my mother's always tried to teach me about them. 73, yay, I was right. Thank you, Shamara. The handles sometimes are like Bakelite, which is a huge deal. And it's lined, yes. Thank you, Tara Apple, yes, Bakelite, exactly. Um, and it's lined and it, there's no rips in it. And she always, my mother is the one that taught me, I have to say, as much as, you know, guys, I'm not in love with my mother. Usually her and I don't get along. But my mother did teach me a lot about garage sailing and stuff. One of the things is she puts her face in everything and sniffs. Oh, look, it doesn't smell. So that's good. It means there's no mildew or anything. It's lined. I paid a quarter for this bag. <laughs> yeah, she really was. She was like, get out. And then I like the rainbow one a lot. <laughs> and again, vintage. It could be Bakelite, lined, sniff. No, like, mildew smell, nothing like that. So, I don't know. I might keep both of them just to keep my mother jealous. I could do that. I've been known to do that. Right? I know. My mom will like them. I probably won't. Depends on her mood. <laughs> 
So then there was a bunch of little stuff. Actually, let me just start with, I love these. Anytime I see the old tin, the actual tin tea containers, they're like from the 60s and 70s usually. What, Heather? What did I miss, sweetie? What? What? <laughs> Too funny, Jen, but you'll likely share. Yes, I'm sure I will. I, I will, especially because I have so many bags. I really, I, I'm sure I will. <laughs> um, these, I love these old tea tins. They are, especially when they're um, in such good shape with their colors and they haven't faded at all and they open and close really well. Again, they didn't store anything stinky in there. The, it closes awesome. It's really, really good tin. And she wanted $2, so I paid 50 cents for a vintage tea tin. And another vintage tea tin. Again, she wanted $2, I paid 50 cents. And look at the detail on this one. Just gorgeous detail. We would have a tug of war all day, right? <laughs> and again, I, you know, really good shape. Opens and closes really well. Didn't smell like she had put anything bad in there. I paid 50 cents for vintage tea tins. And yes, if you come to my house, I have a bunch of them. I kind of have uh, um, a small obsession with vintage tea tins, but oh well. <laughs> oh, and I got this little change purse for a quarter because again, vintage. And once again, it's I don't. I think they made stuff better. I really do. I'm sorry, but after the the seventies, I think they stopped making stuff so good because they want to make people buy stuff over and over. But this like has pockets in it and stuff for a change purse. It has like a pocket for your lipstick and you know, and it's perfect. And I paid a quarter and it's in perfect shape. We all have obsessions, right? Stuff. Yeah, it does. I have to travel to find a decent thrift shop and I'm not driving because of my shoulder. I have a Sally Ann just around the corner, but does not have much. Built in obsolescence. Yeah. Yep. I know. It. They, they absolutely make stuff cheap so that you have to buy it over and over. For sure. Um, I also found a vintage. This was um, actually candy. They were ginger chews. And it's tin. Um, and in great shape. And I paid a quarter for it. Again. I, I don't know what I'll store in there, but there's all kinds of stuff I can store. <laughs> she wanted a quarter, so I paid like next to nothing. I know it's just a slice of a tree, but I'm like, oh, that's cute. Put that in there. <laughs> I always, I can draw my pentacles on this. Hi, Soul Shine. Every time I, I hear your name, I have to go and listen to the song. Soul Shine. Okay, um, yes, so I'm going to try not to. Okay, and then she wanted a quarter piece for, look at, little wooden witches. Isn't that cute? So for four of them, I paid a dollar. She even started painting one, kind of. But whatever, I paid a dollar for four of them. Um, so <laughs> this was so cool. <clears throat> she wanted 50 cents, so I paid next to nothing. And look it, I got three puppet dolls. Like, okay, I'm sure that's not what they call them, but that's what they are. For sure. And even a little baby puppet. So I got three puppet dolls. Vintage. Doesn't smell like mildew or oldness. Yep, she was a witch. <laughs> yep, absolutely. 
Oh, what you woo? Hi, sweetheart. I didn't see you come in. I paid, she wanted a quarter, so I paid next to nothing. It's a wooden moon. Oh, yeah, definitely cleanse it for sure. I paid next to nothing, and these are all like wooden um, round things, and I can, I know I love the Almond Brothers. Um, you know, I can paint them with, for moons. I've been meaning to do um, like a moon phase mural or something. I can do that. I can put um, pentacles on them. I can whatever. Um, I got three, I think they're paper mache maybe, apples. Will a playing card deck fit in that chimes tint? No, it won't. It's maybe, I don't know, a really teeny one. But look at, compared to my hand, now I have big hands, but not quite. Um, yeah, so I got three different sizes of apples. You know, it's Mabin time in less than two weeks. Is, or no, more than two weeks? Is it less than two weeks? Almost two weeks? It's actually, I think tomorrow, maybe two weeks. So... Ah, uh, that's so cool, Pat. I was reading your story from that. Oh, I just love that. Um, and then I have one more thing after this, but I, I don't know, to be honest with you, I don't know what's in here. <laughs> but I saw Halloween vintage kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, all right, take that bag because, you know, it's less than a quarter. So, um... So there's little spider rings. Remember the old spider rings? I can figure out something to do with that. <gasps> Chase! Hi, sweetheart! And this is wax. <gasps> this is gorgeous. This is like a wax Santa doll or a shaman or something. Hold on. I don't know if you can see this this let me make it there look at isn't that cool i have no i've never seen anything like that that is so cool i really like that i'm so glad i picked that one up <laughs> um and then a teeny tiny pumpkin that I can put in my fairy garden. And a teeny tiny pumpkin ring. And I don't know what this is. But it has a skull on it. <laughs> but it looks like a... You know what it reminds me of? It's like a stopper to a, an old bank. You know, the rubber stopper. I don't know if that's it. Hi, Shauna. Love tiny things. I know, right? Me too. And then finally, the last thing I got is, and I saw them like almost as I was checking out, um, is bags and bags. I got four bags of these little brooms. For So I spent a dollar for all of them. And look at how teeny they are. Little black witch's brooms. So I was like, ah, cute. I look amazing in your bones. I, oh, yeah. The little, yeah, for sure. So, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I will figure it out. Heather, you want one? See, I know. Maybe I'll just send them out with, you know, sow and incense. Oh, wait. I got five bags. Ha. Maybe I'll, when I make my Samhain oil and my Samhain incense, I'll send them out with my Samhain oil and incense or something. So that was my garage sale haul. Amazing, right? And all because she posted pictures. She was smart enough to post pictures. Oh, yeah. Wait, I got a bookmark for a quarter, which I thought was super cute. Look at That's totally vintage, too. <laughs> What's it say? Crafty like a fox. Ha! So cute. 
Good job, right? I know. I'm so proud of myself. Like, and then I didn't go, like, I still have money left, which <laughs> I'll be honest with you, does not happen to me very much. Usually if I go garage selling, I'm like, wait, I think I have a quarter on the bottom of my purse. <laughs> so, and I didn't stop at another one on my way home, which I totally passed like five of them. And I'm like, oh, I could stop. No, no, just go home. Just go home. For real. Um, so the other thing is, I know, I don't think I've shown, did I show what I got at TJ Maxx last weekend? Was it Graham's estate sale, a neighbor? No, it was literally, I had to drive over 20 minutes, which is rare for me, but because she was having 75% off and I saw like vintage candles and stuff, I thought, hell yeah. Change the car ashtray. <laughs> yep, me too. Remember when cars had ashtrays? That doesn't seem like that long ago, but it it was kind of a long time ago now. Um, the crystal ball thing. Yeah, okay. I didn't show you guys my crystal ball. So at TJ Maxx, well, first of all, let me show you my, this is, I found a jar at TJ, TJ Maxx. Be scary, eat, drink, and be scary. And I paid five bucks for the jar. Because, you know, it's an awesome jar. The crystal ball thing looks even cooler when you um, let it settle to the bottom. Because, look, it's all clear now and it looks really pretty. But then when you turn it on, look at what happens. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> this is, like, my favorite purchase in a while. Because <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I just think that is the coolest thing. <sighs> yep, I paid 20 bucks. That's it, 20 bucks. And it's awesome. <laughs> I know, you can't actually scry. But when you went back, it was gone. Ah. Uh, so let me tell you um, what I did. And you can tell me if you guys... If any of you have an interest in seeing this or not. Um, so I don't know if you guys know the Antique Anatomy Tarot um, by Claire Good, Goodwin, Good Child, Good something or other. Um, I've had that deck for quite a while and then I got the Ephemera Edition when the Ephemera Edition came out and it was um, independently produced. Um, and then she was coming out with, or she is coming out with, although a couple people I've seen have the mass produced deck. Um, apparently if you order from Walmart right now, you can get the mass produced deck before it's available, even though it's available next week. What's the date today? Can't see. Whatever the date today, it comes out, uh, on the 10th, uh, the Walmart one you can get. Uh, before next week. Like if you order it today, they'll send it today. Um, so you can get that. Um, most people did not know, and I did not know, that that's not the only version that's coming out. Did y'all know that? I got today my Amazon hands on the other version and I haven't even opened it yet. In the UK, it's it's printed by a different printer. Is that, that what this is? Because at 20% off it is. See, look at. So I my intention is to get this version and then get the other one and then do kind of, yes, this is the blue box. Do kind of a comparison of all three to see if they're different, if they're the same, it, what what the deal is. Because I definitely wanted to get the other version I've had on pre-order. Here it is. It looks totally different. And it's funny to me that it's called the Antique Anatomy or Antique whatever. And this is called the Modern Tarot Reader. What? That seems odd. That they changed the whole thing. Um, because um, I wanted the book 
is really why. Uh, now, I will tell you before we even start looking at it at all that I have heard the cardstock is shit. I don't know if that's true for this box or not, but I have heard that the cardstock is not great. So you open it up like a book, kind of. And there's the inside. It's weird that they changed the name. Okay, so I think this is the ephemera version, I think. Boho did an unboxing yesterday of the one at Walmart. So there is the book. I know it definitely isn't modern. And I don't think they're exactly the same. Um... I think that they are a bit different. Walmart has cards now. Yes, not in the store usually because, you know, they have to keep up appearances. So they usually, they have it on their website though. Hi, Sue. Um, and they will deliver like usually within a day or two. Um, but, you know, at the store, they have to promote. Stop it, Jenna. They have to promote their own agenda. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, but it has a history of tarot, an introduction, the major and minor arcana. I think this is going to end up to be different, some of the cards, guys. I think, I think. So it may not be exactly the same. as I'm talking about as the, the deck I have. The... Um, yeah, I'll have to do um, a side-by-side. Side. The book is different, is it? That's what I was wondering. If the book was totally different. I wonder if this book is smaller and like has less information. I'm very, very curious as to what the other book looks like. I'll have to look up and do... Uh, oh, oh my goodness. Oof. Yeah, this is the ephemera. Definitely the ephemera edition. Um, but wow. Cardstock is shit. Like, it feels like paper almost. Yes, I did. I actually got this one off of Amazon too. Um, wow. Wow. I'm really super happy that I have my edition because, wow, that is horrible cardstock. Yeah, I still have, um, I still have these in order. So it's exactly the same. Not the backs, though. This is the independent version. This is the mass-produced version. And whew, I don't know how to describe. Hear the difference? This is like cardstock. This is like paper almost. I'm like a little worried about it. Uh, compared to the, um, this one is. <clears throat> Oh, gosh, comparable to what deck? I don't know. I've never felt cardstock this shitty. <laughs> it, do I have a deck even? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have a comparison. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'll have to pull out a couple cardstocks. Uh, who produced this one? This one is... question. Let me look at the book. Illex? What the hell is Illex? For Illex. Quarto Publishing. The Quarto Group. 
first published in Great Britain in 2019 by Illex, an imprint of Octopus Publishing Group Limited. So I know I'm like, I, I can't even describe how shitty this feels like a knockoff deck you buy on Wish. Yeah, I'm not even. I don't know. Like, okay, here's the thing though. The only, now the savings grace to this is baddest Dollar Tree playing cards? Maybe. The only thing is there is a finish to it. Like you can feel that it's a finish um, on it. So maybe it's paper or maybe it's the plastic, the new plastic stuff and they, they just didn't do the finish that we're all used to when they do plastic cards now, the gorgeous finish, you know? Ugh. Oh, here's, uh, this is going to be a problem too. I'll tell you right now. So let me put this back in here and just show you. I hate this. Use it for artwork, right? Okay. See the separation in the deck? <laughs> that is a clear separation. So it was like produced in two different piles. And that will never go back to normal. Never. No matter what you do to it. That will never go back to normal. That's why I don't like, like Rock Pool for a long time was doing the two different slots and it did this when you tried to put it together. This is so bad. Oh, this is so bad. I mean, I'll look through it. Here's the, the good part of this, and I'll tell you right now, right off the bat, <clears throat> the reason that I got any of them, <clears throat> like I, because I have my awesome edition, my, you know, um, I don't really, I, I wasn't really all that concerned about the deck, to be honest with you. It's the book. I bought it for the book because she's never had a book. So... Yeah, I hope the other version is better, too, because it's way more expensive. I literally only spent $20 on this. So maybe she did it with two different publishers. I don't understand how that happens, though. Um, Hi, no one. <laughs> Welcome, and I'm so glad you're here. Um, I don't understand how two different publishers. <laughs> I am. Oh, that's so bad. I it is. Oh. Uh, it's so, it's so bad though. Oh, it's so bad. I don't know. I just feel like it's going to fall apart on me. <laughs> Maybe it's not as bad as I think, guys. Because, look, it seems to riffle, okay? I, I just keep waiting for one of the cards to bend and go, <laughs> Um... I will tell you that I bought it mostly for the book um, because she's never had a book. Um, I Yes, I will watch Boho's walkthrough too because she has the other version, right? The version in the box that I really like that I kind of can't wait for is in a, a cream colored box that looks like this kind of, except it's really big. Um, so I don't know. I don't even want to go through the deck. Yeah, I, that's what I keep thinking. Maybe it's new advanced paper technology and it'll wear really well and it just feels like shit. <laughs> the book is so much better than the other one, is it? I don't know. It just... I'd be interested to hear the creator's thoughts and why there's two different publishers doing this um it just feels cheap really really cheap she said she was going to probably back in contact paper yeah so in other words hi thomas how are you so in other words, the cardstock is probably the same through both publishers, um, but it sounds like the box is different and the book is different. So I'm still going to keep my um, pre-order and wait for um, 
wait for the other version and see which one I like. Yeah, hopefully it won't have that bend in the cards. Absolutely. Because I'll tell you, the book is gorgeous. I mean, it really is. There's nothing wrong with this book at all. Um, so I probably will keep it just for the book. Um, regardless, it's got to be different. Because look at, these are very obviously our cards. Like these cards. And I know the backs are different, I think, on the other deck, too. You're good? I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing, sweetie? Yes, the cards are gorgeous also. I, I will say, I mean, it looks exactly the same to my uh, ephemera edition. The cards are a little bit smaller. No, they're not. That's my... Nope, they're... They're exactly the same. So they are exactly the same. The backs are the same. Oh, and the same cardstock. Just my edition. I love my cardstock edition. Like my edition's cardstock is, it's not perfect, but it's very good. It reminds me of a Llewellyn, you know, which people complain about anyways. Llewellyn being too thin. I don't mind Llewellyn. Um, but this. Like I said, you can hear the difference. That's my edition. That's theirs. That's theirs. Oh, yes, Pat. Are you telling her about the MeWe? Yes, we do have. We um, have set up a group on MeWe, um, which, thank goodness, um, sh not Shauna. I almost said Shauna. Uh, which Pat and um, Jennifer uh, Bebow is helping us to run for the most part because I just have been too, a little too busy with my jerky <laughs> um, work to um, do much in there. And I apologize. I totally meant to, and I still mean to, contribute a lot more into the MeWe. Um, because I think we'll end up probably um, transferring over to MeWe eventually completely. Because so many people don't like Facebook. On top of that, Facebook is getting to the point now where they are getting rid of pagan groups. Yes, everyone should join. Absolutely. MeWe is a new platform. So like Facebook is a, a social media platform. MeWe is a new platform um, that we have transferred a lot of our people over to. That we are, yeah, they don't have the same rules as Facebook. Exactly. I don't have the link right now. Oh, look at Heather, you rock. There's the link for me. We Perfect. Um, and our group, I think, is public right now because not a lot of people know about it. So I kind of figured even the witches who are in the closet witches, they, um, yes, you do need to sign in and make an account. They, you're not going to be seen by most of your family. Facebook is, um, Marge, Facebook is making it very hard for pagan groups to post stuff. They are flagging a lot of posts. They are getting rid of posts. They have gotten rid of our group chat, although we have found a way around that, haven't we, people? I think our group chat has been going very well in the squirrel room. Um, but they are discriminating. They have taken down a lot of people's pages without any warning. So I'm just worried that they would do that to us and then we suddenly wouldn't have a platform to go to. So that's why we started the MeWe. And that is, that's okay. Love you, Chase. Hope to see you Tuesday night. Oh, and shit, Chase, did you go already? I was going to ask you when that thing was. I hope I didn't miss it already. They have this great um, video coming up with STW. Yep. Well, this is this is something that you can do. Oh, you are still here. When is that? Um, I, I actually posted it. They have an incredible uh, video coming up. I hope I didn't miss it. <laughs> 
with STW and I'm really excited about it. And I'm sitting here trying to remember what the hell it's about. So I don't look like more of an idiot. Oh, <laughs> uh, what the hell is it about? It looks awesome, whatever it is. <laughs> I already did it. Oh, shit, I missed it. Was this past Friday? I had to miss it thanks to work. Oh, Michelle Osborne was there. He did amazing with the panel. All right, well, I will watch it back then for sure. Ethics and representation in spirituality. Thank you. I was really excited about it. And then, you know, my work brain gets shut off as soon as work is over Friday. And I totally forgot. So I'll have to watch it back. Damn it. <laughs> Hi, TLC. So, yes, uh, I will be getting the other edition shortly. Actually, I may order the other edition from Walmart and cancel my Amazon one and see if I can get it in here really soon. You have to watch it. It was amazing. Broke my heart. I had to miss it. I bet. I am going to go back and watch it today. Now, for all of you football fans, I will tell you that Sunday, usually from 1 to 4, my um, I, I don't do videos. I don't watch a lot of videos because it's football. I'm a football queen. I love my fo American football, by the way. I'm not talking about, you know, what we call soccer, what the rest of the world calls football. But, um... Thank you so much, Willow. I learned so much from you. Oh, you're welcome, honey. And that's what I'm here for. That's why I'm here is for people like you. I love to, you know, help out the new newcomers, the beginners, the people that are just kind of feeling their way around. So I'm here for you. Um, so uh, on Sunday, starting this weekend, this weekend is opening weekend. Uh, I will be gone when my bills are on. I am not around. I don't answer phone calls. I don't answer messages. I don't do videos. After my game is off, I, I usually will do another video. But absolutely, I'm I'm a football person. <laughs> I'm obsessed with football as well. It's the other thing my husband and I do together. I'm a Panthers fan, being from North Carolina, but I try to watch every game. There you go. Perfect. You're allowed to be on this channel if you're a Panthers fan. There's only one team that I, um, well, one and a half teams that I pretty much will kick you off. No, I'm kidding. I won't kick you off, but I will pick on you a whole lot if you are a fan of our rivals, which is the Patriots. Um, and, of course, Dallas fans are not welcome. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Really. Oh, I love you, Hexen. I know. And that's okay. I know most people, um, you know, who are witches and most women really don't love football. But Eagles, I can I can deal with Eagles. Yep. I hate Raiders and Patriots. Woo! My husband's a Dallas fan. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Ange. Yeah, to everyone on YouTube, yes. Hate the Patriots. Yes. Woo. Especially now. I cannot. What the hell did they need Antonio Brown for? I'm sorry to go into sports. Oh no, we're a witch channel and I love my witchy stuff. But what the hell did fucking Brady need Antonio Brown for? Really? Really? Because it was hard enough to beat him without Antonio Brown. I am so annoyed. I'm so annoyed. I can't even tell you. I'm like, can we break his legs this year or something? Because I've had enough. I'm done. <laughs> okay, yes. I'm serious about my football people, so I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll try to stop, I promise. But, you know, it's Sunday. I have bills on. Let's get used to this. Because this is, this is where we are. <laughs> what is the page name? The page name is... Mama Squirrel something or other. Isn't that lovely that I don't even know? Hang on. I'll tell you right now. Page name is... Mama Squirrel's Friends. Is that what I named it? Wow, that's kind of a shitty name. <laughs> I may change that name, but that's where it is. Um... 
sound like my ex-sister-in-law uh, just looking at their tiny bits. Woo, yeah, right? You should hear my Tom song. Oh, I'd love to, Shawnee. You'll have to message me it. Um, football bop. Yeah, football butts. Yes, yeah, so squirrel friends. I know. It's all one world. Mama's squirrels friends. Perfect. Thank you, Dana. All right, guys. I love you. Um, Do you want me to come back on tonight? It's up to you guys. I don't mind coming back on and doing either. I could do, uh, you know, finish up the, um, that. I have, gosh, I have so many decks. Do you guys want to see new decks? I have lots of decks. I have this really cool deck that I haven't showed yet called the Cryptid deck, which is super cool. And I really like it. And I haven't had a chance to show it yet. Um, so I could come on and do a couple new decks tonight. All right. Sounds good. I'll come on tonight then and do a couple new decks, okay? 7.30, we'll say my regular time, 7.30, okay? Perfect. Thank you, guys. I love you so much. I miss you guys. You guys have a good rest of your Sunday. I'll see you at 7.30.